speech, chapter 3. We'll read it together this morning. If you have it, say amen. 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 So why don't we read it together this morning? Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and to count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, and that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were it already perfect, but I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glory, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Let's go before the Lord in prayer this morning that his word may come forth and his perfect will be done in this house. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the great I Am, the living Word, the one who was and is and is to come. Lord, there is none like you. There is none before you. There is none after you, O God. By you were all things created, O God. Nothing has come forth, O God, without your hand, including us, O God, your servants who are before you this morning. Lord, of ourselves, you know no good can we do. Lord, of ourselves, we're wretched men, O oh God. Of ourselves, dear Jesus, we are, we are sinful beings, O oh God, and we can do no good of you alone. But Lord, when you are in our vessel, O oh God, when you are leading us, O oh God, when you are directing our every step, O oh God, and when we've obeyed, you call us righteous, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that your word will come forth this morning, not because... 
we are anything special, but because we desire your word, we desire to hear from you, we desire to do a work for you, we desire that our steps be ordered by your ways, O oh God. Lord, let your words come forth, O oh God, your words, O oh God, not the words of any man, O oh God. For Lord, you know the words of any man are not to life eternal, but only your words, O oh God, can bring life. Only your words can change, O oh God. So Lord, I command it right now in Jesus' name that your word come forth, O oh God. Lord, open the ears of the hearers, O oh God, to receive your word, O oh God, that it may change our hearts, may affect our lives, dear Jesus, that we would come and accomplish the word that you've called for us to do. Lord, I give you praise this morning. I give you honor, Lord, for you are worthy, dear Jesus. I exalt you, for you are worthy. Let your word come forth. I thank you for it, and I praise you for it, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We may be seated this morning. And I have to say, I really appreciate the ministry of Paul, because in all of his letters, he always has a word of encouragement, a word of edification, a word uh, to help us along this way. You know, there are many preachers who come and preach these great messages, but if, if the word doesn't apply to our lives, if there's no practical application, then it's lost. It may sound good, it may sound great, but if there's no practical application, then it doesn't help us at all. And so I'm grateful for Paul's ministry because in every word and every letter that he sent, he sent these letters uh, not just to send news, but to exalt, to encourage, to, to give teaching to the people that he was writing to. And, and this letter when he's writing to the Philippines it, it is no different. In this particular segment that we read, he starts off, he says, Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Because Paul knew that it's in the Lord that we find our strength. That no matter what the situation that we're going through is, we find our strength in Christ. And if Paul, if no one could talk, Paul could talk because he is, he'd been through some stuff. He'd been shipwrecked and cast aside and, and fasted often. Not because he wanted to, not because he was super spiritual, but because he was hungry. He didn't have any food, you know. didn't have any clothes. And, and so he'd gone through uh, different trials in his life that sometimes we'd look at it and we'd just be like, oh, you know, I don't know if I can go through that. But he went through something that through it all, he was able to say, my brother, rejoice in the Lord. For his strength was not in his possessions. His strength was not in the knowledge that he had. His strength was not in anything of this life. But his strength was in the Lord. And that's what allowed him to persevere. That's what allowed him to continue. That's what allowed him to have a smile on his face even when when he knew that death was imminent, he said he was not ready not only to be bound, but to die for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I, I pray that we would have that same kind of attitude for these letters are here in the Word to give us an example. The Bible calls them a great cloud of witnesses, and they're there for an example for us to follow and to know that we too can make it. We fix our minds to Christ and have that same attitude, have that same uh, fortitude of spirit that we too can make it. And so when he's writing to the Philippians and, and going over, he's saying, uh, writing to them again about the things that they need to know. And one of the things that he starts off in the beginning of his letter, he's telling the people to beware of dogs, to beware of evil workers, and beware of, of the concision. For he knew that even amongst the people who call themselves part of the church, even uh, amongst those who were there and who called themselves a part of the kingdom and said that they were doing the work for, the, for God, he, he knew that even amongst them there were those who later on he called to tell us that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, the enemies. They, for whatever reason they've allowed the things of the world to, to distance them or to make them turn against Christ, even though uh, they may still be walking physically with the church. They may still, you know, show up for church every Sunday. They're those who are the enemies of the cross.